afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Uh, my name is Niveda Nityanandan and I'm from University of Madras and my topic of discussion today is uh, environmental benefits of using sugarcane bagasse as a byproduct development uh, and I've done like a case study in um, EID Pari in India. Uh, the term sustainable development is when the requirements have uh, meet the requirements and um, in, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, the term sustainable development is when requirements meet having in mind the social and economical limitations and without disturbing the balance which is set up uh, with environmental issues in mind. For example, um, the dependence of fossil fuel energy uh, source can be uh, alternated with other sources uh, such as um, battery and um, sugarcane bags as such. Uh, this has not been proved uh, yet and uh, it's still on a working progress. Um, sugarcane is one of the most important agriculture crop that is cultivated in um, tropical countries. Um, the annual global production of sugarcane is 1.6 billion tons. In the post-harvest processing, uh, the sugarcane left out with many residues, such as sugarcane bagasse. This can also be called as SB and a sugarcane leaves. This is also called SL. This SP and SL can be used in different forms. This is, um, this will, uh, this will, sorry, this will, uh, this will, um, you know, like, uh, this will like imp have an, a positive impact on the environment in the basis of uh, reducing the different hazards faced. The study is uh, aimed to discuss the uh, efficiency of sugarcane bagus and utilization and development of byproducts in EID Pari, India, uh, thereby uh, producing less waste and a more sustainable development. You might ask me why, how is this related? And uh, this is because, uh, as I said before, it's a balance that is maintained between um, economy, uh, economical uh, growth and the social impact. So whether it is economical growth and whether it's the social impact, that is us. Both is related to humans, that's us. And uh, the major thing that we're missing out of this is the balance between nature and us. So uh, to get back to the nature, to like set everything right, we have to do this. We have to manage our waste. We have to manage the hazards that we are causing. Um, between the year, I'm sorry, um, between the year 2017 and 18, the global production of sugarcane accounted for 280 million metric tons. As the result of production of sugarcane increasing, this will leave a large amount of sugarcane residues. Uh, such as SB, uh, is a, uh, SB is a rich uh, source of uh, polysaccharides and that is widely studied, widely studied producing biofuels and chemicals. Uh, I would like to state some of the uh, chemicals that can be produced uh, from uh, the SB, uh, some of which are ethanol, exenthal, um, enzymes, bio, uh, biopolymers, 
uh, antioxidants and lactic acid amongst few of the others. Uh, Sugarcane bagus has a um, high, ca high capacity for um, generating energy through application of gastrication process. Uh, gastrication is uh, basically uh, burning the sugarcane. Moving on, um, the history of EID Pari has uh, a rich historical founder found in the year 1788 Found in the year 1788, Pari is a very commonly known uh, household level uh, sugar. It's been uh, like this for almost 225 years. The first plant was started in the year um, 1788 in a place called Nellikuppam, Tamil Nadu, India. And it is still fully functioning today as well. Uh, the Pari group is uh, a part of Murugappa group of companies. And um, this uh, case study was focused on EID Pari in fully uh, automized standalone unit. In um, Siva Gangai, um, functioning from the year uh, 2009, it is the first of its kind in India, um, zero effluent, zero emissions, and uh, self-power generating, and is nutraceutical space of one of the world's leading microalgae and spirulina production, and it also produces natural beta carotin. Uh, these are some of the reviews that I have referred. And something that I would like to mention from this is um, agricultural, in agricultural industry waste is um, one of the most um, changed and challenged that to be used as a renewable resource. And um, as a raw material, um, essential in terms of common used raw material such as sugarcane bagus. Uh, I think the hardest part about this is when it comes to renewable, non, uh, uh, renewable raw materials, uh, it, has a, it has slightly more higher pre-processing that's required. And I think the uh, industries uh, hesitate to uh, go through this pre-processing and thereby they go for renewable resources. And I think this is, a matter of time that uh, it's possible to change the mindset of the industries. And um, I would also like to mention that for every one ton of sugar cane, there is 280 kgs of SB that's produced. And uh, 280 kgs is almost 0.28 um, per ton. And um, it might not seem like significant amount of uh, waste that's produced. But in terms of uh, its hazard, if SB is left open in the environment, uh, it is, as I said, uh, it is highly um, containing of polysaccharides, which is actually a very uh, good source of energy for microorganisms. So uh, a lot of microorganisms tends to grow on this SB and um, thereby it causes a lot of diseases and epidemics. So uh, when a product can be used as a raw material for uh, development of something else, you know, why waste it? Uh, major uh, countries that have been uh, producing uh, sugarcane uh, are um, India, um, one second. Okay, so major countries that are producing uh, sugarcane bagus is uh, Brazil, India, China, Thailand, 
uh, Pakistan, uh, Mexico, Colombia, Indonesia, Philippines, and uh, United States. Um, most of these countries are tropical climate, so it's easier for sugarcane production. And um, I would like to uh, explain, these are the uh, three different stages of treatment that the sugarcane bagus has to go through for production of these byproducts that are given in blue. And uh, most of it has already been mentioned, so moving on. Uh, these are the three major production, uh, three major uh, wastes that are generated while processing um, sugarcane for sugar. And one of it, uh, the first one is sugarcane bagus, and uh, next one is milled mud, and the third one is molasses. Molasses, we'll be discussing about it later. As a summary, uh, the analysis is uh, basically uh, is uh, basically done to encourage the byproduct uh, byproduct development and utilization of uh, sugarcane bagus um, in development of other products, and uh, the power generation uh, can be done in uh, sugarcane bagus through a co-generating plant. And uh, EID has also proven it by um, producing power for over 200 days out of a year, uh, which is 365 days. And uh, they are a fully functioning plant. And um, utilizing uh, SB uh, reduces the impact of uh, environmental hazards. I would also like to mention uh, some of the um, some of the other findings. As I said, the mola molasses, um, the the molasses that is produced by EID Parry is about uh, four eight six zero zero tons, which is forty eight uh, thousand tons. That's produced approximately, and uh, this entire molasses is also uh, used by EID Parry. Uh, for uh, second grade and third grade production of uh, sugar. And um, they also, um, the, uh, about the power generation, EID Parry uses a system of uh, boiler. Uh, for the people who don't know what boiler is, because bo boiler is a very Indian thing. And um, so what they do is, uh, they load in about a ton of um, sugarcane bagus uh, into the boiler feed and uh, boil it in the ratio of 0 0.1 per hour. And, um, and burning of this sugarcane bagus uh, reflects in uh, electricity and power is generated. And they do have a few limitations for this burning. And uh, they um, have uh, limitations as such, like uh, a specification for uh, how much amount of uh, product can be burnt. And uh, they do have air filters so that they don't uh, pollute the air around the uh, place. Uh, moving on to the limitations of the study is... Nifreda, you have two minutes. Yeah, thank you. Um, this study is... Uh, not a has not taken any scientific approach. And I think uh, for the future uh, researchers, uh, it needs to have a more scientific approach. And I think the, um, the scientific approach needs to be more industry specific because different industries have uh, different um, effluents and different effluents have different nature. For example, in a uh, dairy industry, the dairy um, effluent tends to be more um, uh, protein-based, and protein has a different composition in comparison with uh, the bagus. Uh, in conclusion of this study, the different products that can be uh, formed from sugarcane bagus, and this is also including uh, my reference material, is um, development of chemicals and um, 
development of fertilizer. So uh, the boiler uh, that has ashes in it, those ashes can also be used as a fertilizer. And uh, the fertilizer fixes nitrogen. And it's very rich in nitrogen, so the local farmers around the place do use the, f um, the boiler feed as a fertilizer. It does form um, it, the development of bio uh, ref refineries and other ingredients and um, development of uh, paper uh, packaging materials and um, uh, with the increase of uh, industries and uh, increase in um, byproducts. This could uh, efficiently reduce the cost of um, disposal for the industries if this is done right and uh, be more environmental uh, friendly as well. And I think the EID Paris has uh, set an example for uh, India and um, this could be uh, used further in uh, the other industries as well. Uh, I would like to thank um, UNEP and WASD for this uh, platform and all the support. Special thanks to uh, Ms. Janet and team and uh, Mr. Alam and team and for making me feel so uh, close even though I was so far. And special thanks to uh, mom and dad. There's nothing without mom and dad. And uh, thank you all for your patience and thank you for listening. So please remember, if we all help and do a little bit, it will make a big difference.